Hello, hello, good morning, happy Saturday, everybody. Let me just do a quick audio check, like always, make sure I'm good to go. All right. Give me one second. All right, we are good to go. Yep. Good to go. All right. iPad looking good here. Make sure we're good here. All right. Hey, happy Saturday, everybody. Welcome to Romero Threads on YouTube, where it's all about embroidery. Today, we have a very, very informational type uh, morning. Okay. So uh, I know we've been doing a couple projects. Okay, we've been doing all sorts of type, uh, different types of projects. Today, I want to take one step back and kind of uh, do an overview of just software. And really, this is just software in general. Okay, even though I do have a specific software, this is applicable to pretty much any type of software. Okay, um, so we'll have a good uh, a good morning filled with information about software, and at the same time. OK, if there's any question that you have about any feature uh, on a software, OK, I'm pretty sure we all use kind of like the same, uh, a lot of the same tools, a lot of the same properties and uh, features that our software has. Or sometimes we have a feature on our software that we're really unsure of. Do, should we should we use it? Do we have to use it? OK, so I'll kind of talk about all the bells and whistles that you might see. And is it even useful? Is it even useful or do we even need to use it? All right, so I'll get into the details of that. All right, uh, I wanna say good morning too. Okay, we got Lejean. Morning, Lejean, Salty Gravy, Creamsberry Crafts from Bremington, Washington, TMG Customs, Barb from sunny North Central Minnesota. Yep, I got the windows open right here. Okay, I actually have the the whole window open here. So, all right. So, we're getting a nice breeze right here. So, very nice here. All right. Linda from Southern California. I'm pretty sure it's always nice over there. All right. And uh, TMG. All right. Nice, mighty hoop set. Yep. 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 I got it right there on display. Looks nice right there as a backdrop. Uh, I'm actually going to uh, move all my equipment around. Okay. Because uh, I'm actually going to shift the machines towards more of the center just so we could get a little bit more light because it's kind of like dark in that corner and we're going to move all of our storage that's on that corner we'll, we're just going to kind of move stuff around so i'll probably have that this one here as just uh mighty hoops put all my mighty hoops there just so we're not scrambling looking for pieces when we need it all right all right 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 um let's see so today let's just see this quick preview of what i'm working with today all right, we got a little flipper right here. Okay, uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna digitize uh, this dolphin. So as I'm kind of going over some of the features of just the common features that we see in digitizing. All right, I'll use this dolphin as my example. Okay, I think it has uh, different different colors, different kind of movement, uh, different stuff happening. So excellent, uh, excellent artwork just to kind of go over some of the fundamentals of digitizing okay and i actually i have a question of the day this morning okay Let's see if i got it up all right yep all right so today's question of the day what is the most challenging part of embroidery okay so i'm pretty sure everybody's gonna have a different answer okay so uh for you right for your shop okay or maybe uh, whatever was the most challenging part of the embroidery isn't anymore or like when you started. Okay. So what, what is, or what was the most challenging part of embroidery? Okay. So I'll, I'll start off with this one here. Okay. When I first started, I think the most challenging part for me was understanding digitizing. Okay. I didn't understand why we had to, uh, send out artwork to a digitizer if the artwork was already ready, right? Graphic designer already had the logo. Um, the company already paid the graphic designer to do all the artwork. 
why would we have to uh, send it out and and hire somebody to digitize it? Okay, so right, I'm pretty sure a lot of us right thought that uh, the embroidery was all push and play. It's, you just got to put in the USB, push start, and everything just starts stitching. Okay, so kind of took me a while, and even when I did understand digitizing, even when I understand, okay, that makes sense. You have to turn the artwork. Okay, you got to turn artwork into actual stitches, okay? Even even when I got up to that point, okay, that opened more questions such as uh, all the settings, why are there so many settings? Why do why are there so many options in digitizing, okay? But slowly, right? Slowly as we slowly understand and kind of make sense out of digitizing, all right? Once we understand the fundamentals, okay? Or once I understand the fundamentals, once I understand why, right? I always ask the question, why are we doing it like this? Okay. Uh, once I understand, once I understood all the fundamentals, all the who, what, where, when, why, hows. Okay. Now digitizing made more sense and it actually got to the point where it became fun. All right. So anything, right? It just, just like in life, right? If anything that's challenging, once you understand it, right? You don't fear it and it actually becomes fun. All right. So uh if anybody kind of went through that same situation or if somebody is starting and digitizing seems overwhelming all right i i promise you if you understand the fundamentals and you practice on the fundamentals you get to the point where you understand it and then you actually enjoy digitizing or editing digitizing because sometimes you might send it out to somebody and there might be little tweaks that you got to change all right. Instead of freaking out, all you're going to say, hey, it just requires a little change here and there. All right. All right. So. All right. Uh, good morning, Janet. All right. Good morning. We got Donna. Thanks for doing these. Class. Yep. Yep. All right. Marisa from Southern California. We got Patty from Oklahoma. All right. Aldell. Good morning. All right. All right. Uh, so we got one here. It is threading all the needles. Yep. If you're talking about all of them, it might take you a minute to do all the needles. All right, right. All right. Juan P. Ramos. All right. Good morning. Thanks for your video. Yep. All right. Oh, yes. This is a big one from Lejean. Perfect placement, right? Getting that perfect placement, um, getting it straight. Okay. Yep. Perfect placement. I'm all about getting it 100%. When I land at 98%, perfect placement i'm kind of right a lot of times uh customers or even just the general public they won't notice little small details that us embroiders might notice so if it's if it's not perfect i i know what you're talking about because we notice somebody else might not notice but we notice right and of course the tension right salty gravy tension is always a challenge right we're always uh trying to find the perfect tension even when you do have it perfect Right. Even though when you do have it perfect, one week you have it perfect and then the next week you don't know what happened. Right. You don't know what happened. And all of a sudden, all your tension is all off and you got to redo and do everything. All right. All right. So these are very excellent answers. All right. And of course, like I said, right. Not anymore. Right. So the stuff that we encountered, we understood. Right. We took on that challenge. Uh, we understood whatever challenges we had, and now we understand it. And now it's to the point where, right, is we don't have to worry about those challenges no more, right? So anything, anything that we um, that's challenging in embroidery, all right, trust me, you're gonna go through it. Okay, everybody goes through the heartaches of embroidery. Okay, right, it's the digitizing, the hooping, and you're uh, setting your settings on your machine. Okay, learning your machine. Learning if something is off, right? If you're hearing a, a, a small sound coming from your machine, you should have an idea of why that sound or why something is happening. All right. And then TMG, 3D puff on caps. All right. Yep. That was my first project, right? When I when I started doing uh embroidery. 3D 3D puff was my first project, right? If I were to recommend somebody brand new doing if they asked me what should my first project be, I definitely wouldn't say 3D Puff, right? But I didn't know at that time I did 3D Puff, but I learned I learned very quick what to do, what not to do. All right. 
All right, thank you for that. Go, go, Savvy Designs. Got it. All right, all right. Hold on. Let me let me take out this banner. All right. Thank you for sharing your most challenging part of embroidery. All right. Um, let me fix this here. Hold on. Give me one sec. All right. All right, I'm trying to fix my comment section. It's kind of all. All right, it's all good. I got it right here. All right, all right. And then we got uh, Kingsbury deciding which details. To yes. Okay, very good right here, right? Because you might get a design, right? Full of details, full of very fine details. And you have to tell the, you have to recommend to your customer what we can and cannot keep or what you would recommend to take away, okay? Because the more details, the more dense, and the more problems we could have with our uh, stitch out, right? So yes, that one, that one is always a, a, uh, a fighting battle that we're going to have because we know our limits of, of embroidery, okay? Or, or possible limits. All right, and then Patty, good one. This is uh, dealing with your tension, right? Bobbin thread showing on top, which should never happen. Okay, definitely a tension problem. All right, all right, all right. Good, good, uh, good responses. All right, it's every, every challenge that everybody went that everybody listed. We went through those same challenges too. All right, so I'm pretty sure everybody can relate. All right, all right. Uh, let me go ahead. Let me shift over to the software here. All right, so this is uh, the sample that we're going to use here. We got the little dolphin right here. All right, let me switch over here. All right, at any time, okay, at any time, if you have a question, all right, uh, really, uh, I, I use Wilcom 4.5, which pretty much has all the bells and whistles, but trust me, I do not use all the bells and whistles. Uh, there's some there's some features that you need a specific uh you need certain embroider machines to do some of these uh, bells and whistles type stuff. Okay, uh, there's more more tools than what I need. Okay, but it does have a lot of stuff that I do like. All right, but I I'm gonna keep it very basic. I'm gonna keep it. Uh, so before doing today's show, I reviewed um, I reviewed other softwares, their manuals. So I have I downloaded all the different uh, other softwares. Okay, so I compared them. I, I made sure that what this what what I'm going to talk about today, okay, is on. Um, so if you're using Brilliance, okay, I I I studied the uh, Brilliance manual. Okay, a lot of the stuff. Okay, similar, similar. Uh, the location of the buttons or the names of the buttons or the tools might be different, but a lot of the same concept. Also, Chroma. Okay, I saw the the manual for Chroma. Okay. Uh, Chroma manual is not, I wouldn't, there's not that many pages to it. It's very basic. Okay. The Brilliance, uh, manual, they have a very, very good manual that goes into details. So if you do have Brilliance, you might get into a lot of the details on that. And of course, Wilcom, the manual, even if you don't have, uh, Wilcom, I would still suggest to have, you could just search Wilcom, uh, manual PDF. Okay. Because they really, really get into the details. OK, they get into the details of digitizing and it's just good to know what what uh, what tools are out there and what can be done in embroidery. OK, and uh, also, most likely, if you do send out your files to a digitizer, he's probably using Wilcom or, or something similar. OK, that way, you know, other other special features that can be done. Right. If you if you want a certain look. If you want a certain look to your design, you could probably request a certain look or a certain angle. And you know that if your digitizer uses that same software, that he's able to do that. All right. But for the most part today, we're going to keep it very basic. Maybe in another video, I might go into details of each each um, tool, each feature. Uh, why is it used or when do you use it? All right. But for today, I want to keep it very basic. Just so 
it's compatible to any of the software that you have uh, in your in your machine. All right. Now, there's always the question. Uh, there's always the question, right? We, you're always going to see the question. Uh, do I need software? Do I need embroidery software? Should I buy embroidery software? Which embroidery software should I buy? Should I buy very expensive? Should I buy very cheap? Okay. For the most part, when you buy a when you buy an embroidery machine, okay, uh, I'm pretty sure most or all companies give you a free like basic digitizing software. Okay. Usually, when you get a free digitizing software, it's going to have the most basic features. All right, which we'll kind of go over what, what are the basic features. Usually you could do a lot with those basic features. All right. You are limited. You are limited to all the, the speed, how fast you could digitize and different types of uh, of other features that you can do. OK. But at the very minimum, OK, at the very minimum, if you are doing embroidery, you I wouldn't even say you should. It ha it's like a must. OK, you must. You have to have some type of embroidery software okay that way you could at least replay or see how your file looks like before sending it to the machine it would be okay because you might have the perfect digitizer you might have the best digitizer ever created okay but everybody's human everybody makes mistakes okay i've got one time i send out a file and in return i I got somebody else's file. Okay. I got some random person's file. All right. So they sent me the wrong file. All right. So if you're not, if you don't take it into your software and review it and check it, okay. And you just send it straight to the machine, right? You, you couldn't be wasting a lot of time. All right. So of course you want to have software and at the very minimum, you want to know how to open your artwork. Okay. Uh, so here I have a blank screen. Okay. So notice that everything you cannot select anything because I don't have anything open. Okay. So just like every other software, okay, just like every other software, uh, you, we always start with file. Okay. And for those who are coming from a uh, graphic design background, so if you're familiar with Illustrator, uh, Photoshop, a lot of this stuff, okay, a lot of the hot keys, they're, 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 a lot of them are all similar. They're the same. Okay. So like Control N, right? And the more you do projects, the more you get familiar with the hotkeys, the faster you're working. All right. So we always start with new design. OK, of course, if you're going to start from scratch, we start from new design. If you're going to open. Right. Let's say you bought a uh, let's say you bought a uh, file, then you would go open design and find your file, your DST file. OK. And then here on the drop down, you could say all embroidered machine files. All right. So we'll start with new design. And then once I put new design, all these features open up. OK, so now you have access to all the features. When you get a free program, a lot of these a lot of these features, they're kind of grayed out so you can't select them. OK, uh, they probably do that just so, you know, just to motivate you to 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 upgrade. OK, but for the for the most part, if you're starting out, OK, for your starting out, you definitely don't want to go straight to digitizing. You do want to have a very reliable digitizer where you could send it out. And then when you receive it, you open it up. OK, you open it up in your basic software and then you review it. OK, and then slowly with time, once you understand digitizing, OK, now you can start doing uh, self projects, OK, projects for friends, family. And then right now you're ready to uh, service. Uh, digitizing artwork all right but it is time consuming okay so do expect if you are starting digitizing okay it is artwork it is time consuming if you are into embroidery to make money right away then you definitely want to stay away from digitizing um uh, because it's very time consuming okay so the money is in the production all right making production so you definitely need to hire a good good digitizer all right. So once we got this ready to go, OK, uh, let's just talk about bringing in artwork. OK, so now we have more features here on the file. OK, so we could bring in. Um, you could do it this way, import embroidery. OK, so, uh, or 
import graphic if you have a picture. Okay, uh, but this is the one I want to show you here, right? We have save, we have save, save as. If if you want to uh, save your files so you can edit them later, you would use this save as. But once you're completed, once you're once you're once you finish uh, designing your 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 design, okay. In order to send it to the machine, okay, you need to send it to a language that the machine is going to understand. So you would say export machine file, okay? You would put export machine file. Now you could send it to the machine. But if you just put save as, you cannot send it to the machine yet. That is just for editing, okay? But if you put export machine, then you are ready. Now you could send it to any of the, any of the main, um, files that you have okay so there are there are so many different machines uh files that you can choose okay but of course the most the most popular one is the dst and the uh, pes all right but there are other ones so if if you have specific uh, machines just make sure you save them so what those are called okay when you're editing a file those are called your working file you can edit those files okay those those if if you're sending if your digitizer is sending you a file and you have the working file you can make edits and if he and if your digitizer or if you buy a a, a design that is only embroidery machine ready then you cannot you cannot easily make changes okay you can make changes but it's not easily done and we'll talk about uh why and what's the difference in a bit all right so Let's go ahead. Uh, when I bring in my artwork, I just like to click and drag. Okay, I just find it easier like that. And then once it brings it in, it automatically dims it. All right, but this is the way it is. All right, just uh, when I work, when I'm when I'm working here, I just I just like the grids to be here. So if you don't have your grids on, you can always go to your um, settings. I'll always explore your software see what what it has what limitations it has okay but you want to know all the options okay as an option to put uh customizable hoops i really don't worry about putting hoops okay because all i do is size up my all i do is size up my artwork and then i make sure that artwork fits in a hoop so i really don't have a need to set up um personal hoops but if you want to be 100 percent sure that your design is gonna fit in your hoop. Of course, you can always select it and then you could like create your own sizes, all right? But really, as long as you're sizing up your design and you know the size of your hoop, okay, you should be all right, all right? Uh, but this one here, the, this is a big one here, the show grid. You always wanna make sure your grid is good to go, okay? So you could do play with all the settings and all that, all right? So once you got that, all right, you wanna verify your centered, okay? You got your centered and your height width so i know this artwork the whole thing is a three by three 100 percent okay and then here you want to size up at this point your design should already be 100 percent confirmed right it should already be uh ready to go what you don't want to do is a customer that's unsure if his design's ready or not okay because then you might digitize it and then he might bring you a, a updated uh design which is a headache okay it's a headache uh let's say if you do want to make it if you want to if you do want to size it up okay uh th so here these anytime you see these uh boxes here these are called nodes okay so you could just drag and of course you could size them up okay you could size them up make them bigger smaller and if you want to just make the height bigger of course you're just grabbing the center center line okay and the, the only drawback is that you're taking it out of its ratio here okay or if you want to make it wider all right there are times where something happens and you have to do something crazy like this all right but for the most part you want to if you're going to make it bigger you want to size it up in its correct ratio all right all right let's put that back to normal all right and then we're good here we lock it up okay so when we lock it, K is my hotkey, can't move, and then I just dim it, okay? Really digitizing, I, I would say um, it's anywhere between 60 through 70% is just tracing. 
tracing your artwork. If you know how to trace, okay, if you if you're if you're good at tracing, if you're fast at tracing objects, then you're going to like digitizing, okay? Because really that's what digitizing is, all right? Digitizing is three things. It's tracing, it's uh setting the sequence, okay? What comes first, what comes last, and setting your settings. Okay? So three things. Uh tracing, sequence, settings. Okay, that's that's really what digitizing is. And it could be in any of these orders. Okay, it could be any of those orders. Uh, it could be the opposite around, right? It could be settings, set your settings, uh, sequence, and then trace, okay? So uh, just kind of keep that in mind when you kind of think of digitizing, like where do I start, okay? Where do I start, right? So if we're looking at this dolphin, Okay, if we're looking at this dolphin, what is the bottom? All right, or even before that, okay, how many shapes do we have in this dolphin? Okay, so if you kind of look at it, if we were to break this piece up into pieces, how many shapes? Okay, if we're going to keep it very basic, how many shapes do we have in this dolphin? For example, this eye is a shape. It's a, it's a circle, right? It's a circle. The mouth, it's a shape. Okay, this top part of his fin, the dark blue, that's a shape right there. That's one shape. The middle, the light baby blue, this whole piece is one shape. This front gray, right? That's one shape. And then you pass over here, that's another shape. Okay, so really you kind of have an idea of our shapes. Okay, and we did talk about shapes a couple weeks ago. Okay, it wasn't the most exciting topic in embroidery but if you know how to trace shapes any shape okay i mean digitizing it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a little easier and more understandable from there on out okay so if you are starting digitizing uh the best advice i can give you is learn how to trace all the common shapes okay because really that's all you're doing is tracing shapes and then we're seeing the order all right all right um we got a question from Barb. Uh, this off topic, but where did you get the shelving unit from your hoop for your for your hoop master setup is on and how long is the shelving unit? All right. Uh this one, I just got it. It's either Home Depot or uh, or Menards or I don't know, somewhere, Costco, one of the major big brand box shops, but they're all they're kind of like all the same ones where they're adjustable and it's uh 60 inches, so like the regular five foot. Um, you can find them at all department store, hardware department stores. Um, the, the one that I, these I like, cause they're not so sharp on the edges. So if I ever have to, uh, move anything, it's kind of easy to, cause I've seen like, the the, the less expensive ones, they have sharp edges, which, and they're not too sturdy. These are pretty good sturdy. And then I have my heat press on the same. So I have two, I have one here. And then one here, and then my heat press are on the other one. But yeah, they are firm. But yeah, sixty is like the common, um, the common size. I'm pretty sure like ninety percent of all shelving that are like that, they're all sixty inches. All right, cool, cool, good question right there. All right, right, uh, right there. All right, hey, good morning, Juana. Uh, leaving the beautiful city of Chicago and heading to Maryland. Oh, all right. All right, right, right. Yep, yep. Hope you enjoy Chicago. All right. It's actually, this week was actually pretty nice. You you came you came through Chicago at a good time. All right, right, right. And then TMG, let me get this question real quick. Uh, what almighty who stations do you have? All right. Uh, I have I have my video where I talk about uh, the Mighty Hoop stations, okay? I go into detail on all the Mighty Hoops that I got right here, okay? Because it'll take me like 30 minutes to talk about because once I start with Mighty Hoops, I will not stop. All right, so let's get into here, okay? If anybody has any questions about anything, all right, let me know, all right? Uh, I'm about to get into the basics of the basics here, all right? Now, here, right, we got our tool, Really, uh, this, this, these that I put on my left. What I like about Wilcom is that we, 
I can uh, adjust and put my toolbars kind of like anywhere I want to, right? It, it really follows Photoshop, right? Like, or Illustrator, Adobe, right? So if, if you come from that, from that uh, graphic design area, all right, it's, it's a very easy transition. But I like that I could adjust, right? I can move stuff around. So you could put all your common ones, okay? Uh, if you have more of the introductory software, you can't do that. You just have to get used to where every every uh, tool is at, okay? But the best thing you could do also is just uh, use your hotkeys. So as you notice, when I hover over my, uh, let me make this bigger right here. All right. When I hover, okay, usually it gives you information, okay? It gives you information such as my hotkey is the letter O, okay? You want to start memorizing those hotkeys, so you just move a whole lot faster. For example, reshape here, H, okay? So usually when I'm digitizing here on the, on the show, I'm just calling out, like, letters that I'm pushing. So I'll say, like, oh, I'm pushing H, I'm pushing this, okay? So a lot of them do have... Uh, Hotkeys, those are all there. And then it gives you a little brief information of what of what it does. Okay. And then it tells you, you know, you could go to the manual and it'll it'll give you a description of what that button does. All right. So for us here on Wilcom, if I push F1, it'll pop up and give me more information about the open offsets. All right. All right. So what I first want to talk about here. Okay. I'm going to talk about creating, okay, a, before we start, uh, uh, before we start tracing our dolphin, okay, let me just make a common, well, let me do it like this, okay, I'm just going to do a box, okay, I'm going to do a box, all right, this here is a box, right, nothing too crazy. Okay. So anytime you create a shape, what you created is an object. Okay. This is what's called an object. One object. All right. Usually when you're digitizing and your files, you'll see a list of objects going down the rows. Okay. So each one is an object. I like to say uh, it's it it has its own character. This is I see it as one person. Okay. I see each object as a person as an individual okay and each individual right it's like your uh your driver's license and when you read a person's driver's license uh you can see all their characteristics such as their height their weight okay eye color hair color okay this object has characteristics okay and here on the object properties okay I see this object property. So this one that I'm kind of hovering over. Okay. This object property, which every digitizing software has, I see it like his driver's license, right? This is filled with information on the characteristics of this object here. So for example, his spacing, it gives me his spacing, his length. Okay. If I want to make him less dense, okay, let's say this area is too heavy. All right, let's say we have an area on our design and it's too heavy, okay? We can line them up. So instead of putting a 0.4, let's say 0.1 or one millimeter, right? Or let's put two so we could even make them more spacing, right? So here on the object property is where you're making adjustments on each object, okay? You can always select multiple objects and do all these changes all at once. All right, so uh, let's just go over some of these uh, properties that we can change. So you could change the spacing, you could change the length. Okay, so I'll put uh, I'll put the dots here. Each dot here indicates where the needle drops. Okay, so each drop, each one you see here, is where the needle drops. Okay, we have two millimeters spacing here. So if we pull out our our ruler. Okay, let's go to uh, metrics. All right, this should be a spacing of uh, oh. Hold on. let me select it. 
spacing two millimeters okay two millimeters length and all right so should be close to two all right let me see yeah all right so we're around two millimeters okay now uh, another feature, right? So when we're looking at his property, okay? Another feature that we want to see is the underlay, okay? Underlay, always important, okay? So you can see all the details on the underlay. So when we're reading, if you want to get the characteristics, so equivalent to his driver's license, let me see all your information, right? Where do you live? Where, where, where how, what's your weight, okay? You're going under the object properties. Okay, so anytime we talk about object, it's each shape. Anytime you think of object, just think of a shape. And now we're going to get into the details of each of these shapes here on the property. All right. And then you could also see the pool comp. Okay, pool comp, always uh, important. Right, always important the pool comp. So here at point seven, if you want to extend its reach a bit. So let me go overboard. Let me put one millimeter of pool comp. You'll see how he stretches out. Right, he stretched out all the way over here. Okay, so before, after here, and then I'll put one, right? He stretches out, pull comp, okay? So very useful, okay, object properties. So when you're doing the settings, okay? So I talked about how important settings is. This is where you're doing all that information stuff here under the object properties, okay? I don't think there's another word that softwares use it. Uh, if you use a different uh, software and 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 if you know a different word other than object that software uses, okay. But I'm pretty sure object is pretty much down the line. And our, most softwares use object, okay. Um, and you might see it as object settings or object properties. All right. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Bam, bam. Okay. So. I want to put that there so when we're doing our settings you know where i'm pulling my settings from okay uh now when when i select let me take out this underlay here okay when this so here okay so here i'm on my left side i'm talking about select object so that means select this shape here okay we're selecting the shape and then down below which is the very very useful one reshape object Okay, so these two are like brothers and sisters. Okay, this select object allows you to move your object. It, it lets you kind of resize it. So if you want to make it bigger, okay, you can make it bigger. Um, or if you want to make it longer, or if you want to make it wider, okay, that this one select object lets you do that. But if you want to get into the details of it, right, now you go into reshape. Okay, you go into reshape, and let's say you want to turn this square into a circle. Okay, so you could turn you could turn this uh, you could turn this pivot, strong pivot here, into a circular turn. Same thing here, same thing here, and you could turn all these into curves, right? So now you have a circle. All right, or let's say you want to just make this top part. Right, you want to just extend it like this. This is where you're reshaping and you're adding nodes to your shape. Okay, or let's say you want to make it rounded. Okay, so here you could actually uh, adjust and change your image. Okay, so you're working that with nodes here. Okay, and in embroidery, really, uh, I like to compare it to football, NFL football. Okay, you know that. Um, Hold on, let me pull myself up right here. All right, you know NFL, right? They say uh, it's the game of inches, okay? Embroidery, the way I like to say is it's a game of millimeters, okay? So we're getting into more details, right? One little millimeter can throw your whole design off, okay? So when we're dealing with, with embroidery, okay? So notice here on my top right, okay? Actually, uh, you can't see it right now, because, but I have it in metric. 
meaning I'm looking it at millimeters. Okay. There are times where you do a sample, and it doesn't come out 100% perfect because we got to make a little small tweak, and we're talking about millimeters. Okay. So let me go back. Okay. So let's say you have to move it a tad bit. Okay. Let's say registration is off. Okay. You would. This is where you're making your adjustments. All right, hold on. All right, so you would go, let's say there's a specific area. You go to the reshape, okay? Let's say this, all it takes is to make this small tweak, okay? That 0.1 millimeter might make a difference, okay? So you would kind of do it in this area here of reshape, okay? So anytime you gotta make fine tune adjustments, we are dealing with uh, the reshape. OK, so just to compare it to uh, Illustrator and Photoshop, for those who are uh, from a graphic design background, I would say the select object is equivalent to the, the letter V. Right. And then this one here, the reshape is. Um, is equivalent to the hotkey A. In. Uh, Illustrator. OK, where you could go into more of the details. All right. All right. Let's see. All right. So we talked about these. Now let's get into our tracing. OK, um, I'm going to just use this one, the closed shape, digitized closed shape. Uh, I'm pretty sure every software has closed shape. OK, uh, the way I like to the way I like to digitize. Uh, of course, we have three colors here, right? We have this gray. We have this lighter blue. We have this darker blue. So we got to decide which one is on top, which one is on the bottom. OK, which one is on top, which one is on the bottom? And sometimes there's no correct answer, right? And a lot of times when you're sending it out to your digitizer, your digitizer is making that decision. OK, sometimes they might be right. Sometimes they might be wrong. Sometimes you have to tell them, hey, I want this. I want this color, the baby blue on top. I want this to be the top side of my design. Okay, because there are some designs that it's hard to interpret. It's hard to understand what's on top, what's on bottom. Okay, and since and since embroidery is kind of like a 3D type art, okay, it is really like three dimensional. Okay, sometimes you have to explain or you have to uh, tell your digitizer exactly uh, how you interpret the design. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna uh, now. It doesn't matter what you outline first, what you trace first. OK, some people like to trace the back and work their way up. Some people like the opposite. Some people like to start on top of the design and work their way back. OK, so that really doesn't matter. It just matters to get clicking. Right. That's like the main thing. OK, uh, I'm going to uh, trace the baby blue part right now. OK, I'm going to kind of do it a uh, unconventional way. All right. Uh, this way. I like to do it just to just so I could have the least amount of nodes possible. OK, so let me I'll do this dark blue just so you can see it. Actually, dark brown to contrast this. All right. So here I'm going to make all. I'm going to make. I'm going to click at the corner point at the corner points or at minimums and maximums i'm just doing quick quick um at the corners yeah here okay and i'm doing it like this just to show you something okay uh this is how i would do it if i want to use the most minimum nodes as possible okay sometimes you want to use the less the least amount of clicks just because it's it's a little it's a little easier to uh edit in the future okay so right now i'm just doing sharp turns at critical points so at corners or at minimums and maximums areas all right uh, and i'm going to show you what i'm going to do right now okay Get to this corner. So I'm, I'm I'm tracing the baby blue part. All right, and then here, close it up. All right. So right now it looks right. It doesn't look correct. 
Okay, so what I do, okay, so here I select it, I select my shape, then I'm going to use the reshape. Okay, I'm gonna use the reshape. And now I could come in, right? I could come in and I could add nodes, right? So I know since this, I'll add a node here since it's circular, I'll just bring this up here, okay? Bring it up, make this circular. Actually make this circular, delete this one. All right, now I got my perfect rounded here. Go here, make this circular, add one right here. Okay, so now I have an idea where to add my rounded space. Okay, and I think you would get the most accurate, right? The most accurate trace by kind of doing it like this. Now there are times where speed, right? You need to do stuff faster. This might take a, an extra minute to do, okay? So sometimes it might not be necessary to do it like this, but for the most part, I wanna get it as accurate as possible to trace, okay? So you just add nodes here. You're getting like that perfect turn right here. All right, see, since we have a sharp turn here, I'll just keep this as a squared sharp pivot, put a rounded point here. All right, so we got this perfect curve here using the most minimum. Okay, bam. Sharp turn, and then here, we just need one curve. Put that curve, bend it in, okay? And just FYI, anytime you see a rounded, that means my line is going curve. And then if you see a square, that means we have a sharp corner. So we could put a curve here at this corner. And then, then here, right? Put one right here in the middle. And that sometimes the curve is not a perfect curve. So you gotta put a double, double round right there. All right, so telling you 70% of digitizing is tracing, okay? So once you got the tracing part good, you're on your way there. All right. And the good thing about uh, where this method really works is um, anytime I'm working with logos, usually logos are perfectly symmetric, well-rounded, Okay, graphic designers like using um, well-shaped designs. So usually you're you're really using minimum amount of nodes. Okay, all right. So looks like we have a perfect, perfect, right? Perfect, perfect uh, trace. Okay, you can always double check, make sure you're good. Okay, but everything looks good. So here, right? You like. Really, we could fix this, but sometimes you don't have to be right because we're 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 zoomed in at twelve thousand percent, right? Nobody's gonna look at your design at twelve thousand percent. Okay, so you could keep it around here, well, five hundred, six hundred, right? And it's still it's still good as long as you're good at six hundred percent. I mean, you're more than good. Really, you could go at three hundred. Okay, you could zoom in at three hundred. I wouldn't zoom in too close and be worried about minute details. All right, so we have this part of the, uh, this is what I'm gonna call the the top side of our design. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. We got a question. Hold on. Let me see this. Uh, give me a sec. Uh, Sherry, good morning. Sometimes I can't find sequence window. How 
I, how can I find the sequence? All right, sequence window. I have it right here. Um, if you look at my top left, you see this letter I. Uh, that's the information. Okay, but the sequence is this one right here. Color object list. Right. So if I click it, it goes away. If I click it back on, it comes back on. So this is my sequence here. Color object list. They don't call it sequence. They call it color object list. Okay. All right. And... Hey, good morning. I'm biased. All right. All right. Good morning. Good to have you here. All right. Uh, out there. It will come. It is Windows Toolbar Sequence. All right, there you go. If you want to go it, if you want to do it that way, through the drop down. Cool, cool. All right. Now let me show you something cool. Okay, we could digitize this baby blue, uh, this darker blue. Okay, the same traditional way that I just did it. Okay, but now we have our uh, we have our designs budding up next to each other and you already know what happens when two different objects butt up to each other right we get gaps okay or we get the potential of gaps so this is where our compensation okay somebody got to go under somebody got to go over right so this is where what i like to do since i already have this top part okay since i already have this top part ready to go I'm going to make sure this bottom part is well under my top of my designs. Okay. And then uh, this is a good question right here. All right. Hey, good morning, Rhonda. All right. I do not have hatch. Will the vocabulary translate to other software? Okay. So uh, I would say for the most part, a lot of the vocabulary does translate. Okay. Uh, I was reviewing. Uh, I was reviewing the the uh, in brilliance uh, manual, and a lot of the a lot of the definitions, a lot of the wording, a lot of it is very similar. If there's any changes, the a lot of the words are very similar. Okay, so some of the words are the same, some of the words are a little different. Uh, object for the most part, sequence. Okay, a lot of those words. Okay, they're they're usually all the same. So for the most part, you might have um, software that calls it something different, or also they might have a uh, different locations where to find it. All right, but for the most part, a lot of these settings they're all located in similar locations. Okay, uh, I'm keeping it very basic. I'm using the most basic tools uh, today. That way, it, it's it's applicable for all software. All right what i want to show you right now okay so let me let me select a different color right here okay um here okay uh what i'm going to do i'm going to i want to make sure i i digitize this what i could just do i don't have to go perfectly perfect on this shape and i'll show you which tool i'm about to use Oops. so i'm gonna also again digitize close shape okay what i'm gonna do i'm just going to quickly make my design on this side real quick okay here start here okay now since i'm not since I'm not under my design here. Now I'm going to carefully digitize it. I'm just going to do it the traditional way real quick, just by clicking it. This is a tool that really kind of, um, makes life a whole lot easy by doing some good heavy lifting okay so i'm right here 
All right, let's put this under. What's going to happen is this is going to go under. Okay, H. Let me just make sure my angles make sense right here. All right, so really, okay. I just I I changed this color just so you could see the contrast, so we won't it won't be. So as you can see here, okay. I just kind of I didn't really think about how close to get. All right, really, what you want is somewhere kind of like a one millimeter overlap. Okay, so you want this black part, this black thread. You want it to be at least one millimeter under this burgundy thread okay so right now i just quickly drew something and of course this would be very unnecessary to put this much all right six and a half millimeters of uh thread under okay so what i like to do i like to select both and okay if you have this feature okay if you have this feature this is called the uh, um it's called the flatten Right, it's, it's used here. Let me see which one this is. This is on the uh, stitch angle. A range? No. Yeah, range? No. Applique, transform. Graphic. A range, edit tool. No. Combo. No. All right, it's it's on this one, the one, the one that has this shape. Uh, this one here, I like to uh, compare it to on Illustrator the the feature Pathfinder. Okay, if you have a Pathfinder or a merge. Okay, so here you have weld, intersect, exclude, front, back. Okay. But what happens if, if you use this flatten, what that's going to do is going to flatten these two objects, okay? So anywhere there's, anywhere there's um, crossover, okay? So we have crossover in this area. Anywhere we have crossover, what it's going to do, I have my setting set at one millimeter, okay? It's going to trim it at one millimeter. So let's take a look at what's about to happen. So if we look at this area, I push trim, okay, bam. So we went back and it perfectly adjusted my compensation here. Okay, so all the way around, I'm at one millimeter, all right? The reason why I like that, that way I don't have to kinda, while I'm digitizing, have to get it perfect at one millimeter. Okay, it does it for me right here. All right, so this is what the end result looks like. But in reality, okay, we have one millimeter going under, okay, the top design. All right, let me know if that kind of made sense. All right, um, I'm trying to see what. Yeah, so mm, that one's under this. Stitch angle, reshape. All right, um, and then Good question right here. Um, is that the same as using remove hidden stitches in Embrilliance? Okay, uh, can be. I think uh, I'm not too familiar with with the uh, with with that setting. I know uh, Brilliance does have remove hidden stitches. Um, if it is, you would just have to see if you can adjust the setting, where if you if you want it one millimeter. Okay, but it could be. It could. Be. It sounds like. It sounds like potentially it could be. But that was all, it was all made possible because you can change, you could change it here 
at what overlap you want it at. Okay. Super, super useful. All right. Um, oh, I know why. Select shaping tool. There we go. Shaping tools is what it's called right here. Okay. So on Wilcom, shaping tools. Okay. So we have it up here. Okay. So here I could adjust it one millimeter. All right. Very useful. It has all these other ones that are useful, but this is the one that I really use it the most to get a perfect. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay. Um, okay. Bam. We just kind of digitize it the traditional way. Okay. So what, what, what that allows me to do, that allows me just to do this under part. You know, I could do it like whatever, I could do it all sloppy. Okay. Uh, and then select this under T, put that fly in. Oops. I know why I did. So, all right. What you got to do this part, since it's going to go under, we got to put it under. All right. And now we do it. Now we fly in. All right, flying it, bam, okay, so it's doing it right there, one millimeter, so you can measure it, all right, one millimeter, all right, when we measure it up, all right, okay. and then if you do want to adjust it, right, so like right here, we have this sharp corner coming out, H is the reshape, we just bring this in a bit, okay, no big deal right there. Okay, so we got that right there. Now we put this part of the stomach. All right, bam. Right. So that just allows me to do all this outer part, you know, very ugly and choppy because then put this under. Right. It looks like this. Now I'm going to select that, weld it. Or not weld it, but uh, flatten it. Okay. Same thing right here. All right. It just gives it a nice, consistent one millimeter. Okay. If you try to digitize this one millimeter through, all right, you might get it. You might not get it. You might be off by a certain percentage, but here it does it for me. All right. It does it for you. Bam. Okay. Um, now let's do this last part, this last arm and same thing. So this part of the arm, is like the most bottom part of the image. Okay. Uh, let's say you don't have that feature. Okay. It's not the end of the world. All right, it's not the end of the world if you don't have that feature. You just have to manually, right? If you don't have a certain feature, you just have to manually do it, okay? You just have to manually do that. So here, you would just kind of digitize it like this. All right, so anytime, if you don't have a special feature, that just means you have to manually put it in. So here, let's change this color. Dark blue. Okay, this is going all the way into the box. All right, we'll just keep it like that. All right, so here I just manually did it. Okay, I probably won't get perfectly one millimeter. Okay, 0.76. All right, so sometimes you don't get it perfect. You could always adjust it. All right, let's fix these colors real quick. I'm going to make this black blue this part and this part. Let's make it. Make it gray. Let's just do a quick color, right? 
uh, reddish. Where's that baby blue? All right. See, now we got this, of course, circles. Very easy to work with. You could either use the ellipse here. Just create your shapes. Okay, see, zero. Usually something something small like this, like eyes, I will just make it bigger than what it really is because it looks fine on paper, but in stitches, you want to go a little bit bigger. Okay. See, and then let's do the mouth. Okay, mouth, I'm going to use this. I kind of move my things around. Almost got lost in the mix real quick. All right, I'm just gonna use the traditional this one, column A, which I think is one of the most uh, most popular tool in digitizing because you're just kind of selecting your own stitch angles. All right, just something quick like that. All right, bam, 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 bam. All right, we got that. All right. Um, let me see if we got any questions. Okay, I think we're good. Then, Sherry, is the one millimeter overlap enough to cover the gap? All right. Uh, yes, we're good with, with one millimeter. Because uh, really, okay, really what's happening here Okay. Uh, we find this one right here. H. If you notice, we still have a uh, full comp of 0.17. Okay, so we're still getting. So we have that one millimeter plus this 0.17 coming on this side. Okay, and then on this, on this, on the baby blue part, we have also 0.17. Okay, so really, in reality, okay, if we're going the the reality pool comp if we measure it from this point to this point okay in reality we have about 1.39 pool comp okay because we still have that uh 0.17 times two okay and that one millimeter so we're still getting more okay but of course you won't know okay you won't know until you do your sample out, and I've uh, I did a sample out already, and it worked. But that is a good question because it's very close. All right, that overlay is that over overlap is very close. Okay, there are situations where it might not be enough, so you're gonna have to add more, and then you could add more in that setting here. So here, where where I selected it. All right, thank you for this question because that's good. Okay, because sometimes your overlap is not enough, right? You didn't select enough overlap, so you gotta you gotta adjust it. All right. Um, so here when I so here when I pull up that setting, okay, you would just adjust your overlap to put more. Maybe you need a one point five. Okay. Uh, the more stretchy your your the more stretchy your garment is, the more the more overlap you may need. All right, good, good, good question. All right, make this baby blue. All right, let me pull up big screen right here. All right, right. Mm. All right. Bam, bam. And then TMG. Let me see this question. Uh, and does Chroma Lux have the trim function? Uh, I'm pretty sure it should. It should. It's a very basic uh, setting. All right. And then um, Al Dale, all right. Uh, thank you, Sheriff, for asking the overlap question because I always learn. All right, so this is where I really think um, 
questions, right? Questions. That was a that's why I said it was a very good question, right? So um sometimes when you're starting, you don't know the questions to ask, right? You don't know the details, you don't know the what ifs. Okay, so that's why I do appreciate all of the uh seasoned and the experienced uh viewers that ask questions because right you ask the questions that somebody that might not know what to ask so thank you very much for the questions all right and sometimes a basic question right can can be something brand new to uh to somebody that's never seen something like that all right all right now okay now let's talk about uh there's always the big question okay hold on let me make Actually, I I'm, I did make a list of. Let me see. This is my show notes. Right, just quickly write them. Uh, I made a list. I have like twenty things I wanted to show you here. Okay. Um. Right, because when you're talking about software, there's so many features. Right, even with the most basic software, you have so many features. Okay, so that's what I wanted to say. Okay. Uh digitizing software okay digitizing software a lot of times especially when we're starting it's kind of like um we want to avoid it because it looks so difficult right it looks very challenging um we think that we we're never going to learn it okay but really what it is is just understanding each tool each tool plays a role and as you notice a lot of times when you're digitizing you're using the same i would say the same five tools over and over and over and over and sometimes you don't even use a lot of the stuff right so uh the software that i have has so many other tools that i've never used ever i probably will never use it because i don't have a specific type of embroidery machine that uses some of these um these features okay so a lot of times just kind of understand there are going to be some tools you need some tools you don't need if you don't need it just kind of ignore it, all right? Just ignore it. You don't have to know every, every tool in the digitizing software, okay? Lucky f here, I can remove, I could add stuff, stuff that I don't need, okay? But for the most part, everything that I have here on my toolbar, for the most part, is stuff that I use, okay? Um, so I would say, if you are starting, okay, if you are starting digitizing, the best advice I can give you if you want to learn digitizing is learn lettering, okay? How to make letters, how to put names on hats, okay? How to put names on a scrub, right? The most basic, basic skill in embroidery is doing text, okay? So we've already talked about uh, small text, okay? How to digitize custom text, okay? Two things you want to learn when you're learning digitizing is how to do text, okay? And each, every manual has good information on how to adjust text, okay? And of course, you really you really learn when you actually do stitch outs, okay? So digitizing, see what works, see what doesn't work, all right? And then number two, the second thing you want to do when you learn digitizing is work on uh, practice on corporate logos. Okay, corporate logos are very basic, basic logos. Okay, everything is symmetric. Everything looks nice and clean. All right, I would practice on, on corporate logos and focus on logos in the specific niche you're in. So whatever niche you're in, look for what are the big corporate companies that are in there and just practice on them, okay? And trust me, one day, those companies, they're gonna hit you up, okay? They're gonna hit you up and they're gonna ask you, hey, can you do this logo? And they don't know for the past year, you've been working on their logo, right? You've been sampling their logo. And when by the time they call you up, you're ready to go. Okay, you, you already know the do's, the don'ts, and all that stuff. Okay, once you understand text and regular basic corporate logos, okay, you're good. You're good right there. Okay, you have enough information to get you pretty far. Okay, and then you start learning all the other detailed stuff. All right, so that's kind of like my two cents when starting uh, digitizing. All right, all right, let's go back here. I want to show you one thing here. Uh, all right, so I said 
three things in digitizing is the tracing, which we did. Tracing, done. Sequence, okay? So we got to do our sequencing. What comes first? What comes last? I'm going to say that this dark blue, the dark blue minus the eyes goes first. Okay, so I'm going to say hide others. I'm going to say these first two goes first, okay? So you got to decide where do you want that needle to first drop in, right? So we have to tell, okay, I'm going to start from this top side here, okay? So you push H, right? H is the reshape. Green means where you want to start. I want to start down here. Red means where do you want to end? I want to end here, okay? So you're telling, right, you have full control and telling the software, where do you want to start? Where do you want to end? Okay. So now when we analyze it, this drop, this hole right here, this is where that needle first comes in. Okay. Now, I don't like to start my designs on the edge of a design. I just bring it up kind of like in the middle, right? Somewhere in, in right here in the middle. Okay. That way, because it's going to do a lock stitch right here. It's going to lock up. And you don't want that that little uh, bit of detail kind of sticking out of your design. So I like to put it here. All right. And we'll end here. And then we'll talk about settings underlay. We can put usually with a tatami. I'll just put a tatami with a 90, a 90 degree angle, meaning it's just gonna cross, it's gonna cross the actual top stitch at a 90 degree. And then actually here, I just noticed that H, I got to make it more rounded right here. It was kind of off right here. All right. Oh, yeah, I never came back to double check this part right here. All right, but for the most part, it's good. All right, now, okay, now here, I want to notice here it has a triangle meaning that there's a cut. Of course, we don't want to cut. We want to walk our way down here to the next one. So what we do, we create a walking stitch. Walking stitch down here. Work our way down there. Now, H, start here. Um, H, end right here. So there's no cut. So this triangle should disappear. It should have disappeared. All right. If it doesn't disappear, you could just. What we could do is go to connectors and just force it off. So trim after, just off. All right. I still didn't want it. Oh, I know why. The, all right, we got to put this one blue, make it as our second one. All right, yeah, yeah there we go, went away. Okay, I just had to put it in order. So this top one, we walk, and then we get here. Okay, here, H, we want to start right here where our walking stitch finished. Pick that up, and then we want to end, end right there. All right, so that's how we see, that's how we begin our sequence. Bam, bam, unhide all. Okay, so you want to do all that, unhide all. All right. And then we follow our sequence there. Okay. And then our settings was, that was our settings, setting up our underlay. All right. And our time. All right. I think we're doing good with time. All right. Um, All right, let's open some stuff right here. Open design. So I have I have the final one right here. I'll put this up for download right right after we're done with this one, with this um, this morning's video. I'm, okay, this one's ready to go. I I stitched it out. I just stitched it out with like random colors, just to verify my overlaps. But it's good to go. Okay, and let's talk about this. Um, this one here, right? I put a 
a running a walking stitch around an outer lay okay so here we're going to select all of them okay and then we're going to introduce the simple offset okay which is an outline okay and uh, offset is kind of the same as an outline you can put the spacing you want but we want it to be exactly exactly the the exact the the exact silhouette of our dolphin okay and that's going to put okay a walking stitch around and then you could put a uh, triple triple stitch just so it could stand out even more okay in a perfect world okay in a perfect world this this outline would outline perfect okay this outline would outline perfect but what happens is with the push and pull okay you might have a little minor gap okay it's rare that you get it on the first try like 100 percent okay because sometimes you you some sometimes some areas push more than others okay i know from our sample we had two areas where it kind of opened up so here right you select we're, we're going to select our outer our uh, outline h okay this was the area where where it was kind of gapping right here right so the areas that you gap you could just pull it in a bit hold on put it put it okay so the areas you gap okay so you just push it in a bit whichever areas you kind of gap in okay it was that one and this one here All right. All right. Let me see our final one right here. I'm going to replay. I'm going to play our. OK, so let's see. Yeah, here's where. Where I made tiny adjustments. If you are going to do a, uh, an outer. OK, here I, did, I had to adjust it a bit, too. See, notice I had to bring it in a bit because it's pulling in here. All right, let's go ahead. I have this one ready to go. Or oh, slow it down. All right, so here, okay, I'm just gonna put a uh, replay on our dolphin here. I put an underlay, a tatami underlay. It's 90 degrees to our normal um, tatami. So this one here, our our fill stitch is running at 31 degrees okay so this is 31 degrees and really i want i want our angles throughout this design to kind of be similar just so we don't have a uh, object uh pulling pushing and pulling kind of like in awkward areas all right so that way it kind of blends in now if you have if you have angles like perpendicular angles coming in you might have to add more more overlap okay it walked its way over there to the other side and the reason why we can do a walking stitch here is because we're going to hide those stitches get hidden okay and then it's going to make a cut here right it cuts here now it shifts to the next color Okay, now it's going to do this part, the gray part. Speed it up a bit. All right, so I walked this way over there. Okay, so we kind of did this more uh, similar things. All right, so these two, these two, ob these two color uh, objects, they already have the the underlap, right? So instead of the overlap, it's gonna go under. So we this is already has the one millimeter underlap because it's running under. So this top part should cover our area nice and good all right 
So we could break up this dolphin into different sectors, okay? But just to kind of make it very basic today, we made it one piece here. Okay, sometimes uh, making it simple is better. So I'll put the design. Uh, you could stitch it out, see for yourself, uh, and even make some adjustments if you want to adjust some stuff. Make some adjustments. Okay, for the most part, I like that there's three lines kind of running parallel with each other. Then my angles, my fill stitch angles, they are running similar. That way I don't have no uh, excessive gapping. That's why I didn't have to add that 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 excessive uh, or the more overlap. Okay, that's why one millimeter was all right. All right, close it up. Does the eyes. Does the overlap. In the mouth cool all right and then we're good all right and then one one thing that i want to talk about okay this last thing we'll kind of end with this one here is a big question that i get okay is can i can i resize my design okay i have a design i purchased the design can i resize it okay and usually the the answer is somebody gives you a percentage well you could you could make it 10 percent bigger or five percent bigger 20 percent. i've heard all different sorts of types of numbers okay the correct answer is okay if you have the working file so this here is what we call the working file meaning i can edit okay i have the actual i have the actual files and i have the most minimum nodes okay so notice here, right, is all the nodes. You can see if you have your digitizer's working file, you can see all the locations that he clicked to make his shape. Okay, that is the working file. These are in Wilcom. They are uh, EMB, right, EMB files. And, and in Brilliance, okay. It's BE, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, BE. Okay. Chroma has its extension. Okay. If you have those files, it's an easy day. You can you can adjust. You can make them bigger, smaller. It doesn't it, I wouldn't say it doesn't matter the the size. Okay. As long as you're for a fill stitch, a little easier. Okay, sand stitches, you might have a limit because eventually your sand stitches might get too big. Okay, so here, let's say, let's let's go into inches. Let's go into inches right here. Okay, let's say I want to I wanna make this uh, twice as big. Okay, so here down bottom right, I'm going to put 200%. Okay, 200% bigger. Okay, really, it doesn't throw anything off okay it really didn't throw anything off okay if i were to measure my sand stitches here oops let's go two millimeters if i was to measure my sand stitches all right we're close to four millimeters so we're still in range all right no big deal just notice that i i jumped up 10 000, 11 000 stitches right so before i was at 3700 stitches after, if I double the size, 10,000 stitches, right? That's almost times three. Even though I doubled my, uh, my size, I times three the amount of stitches. Now, what happens is, let's open this. Um, I'll embroider file. So let's open this on the DST. Yep, open. Usually when you purchase a, a embroidery file, you buy it already as the embroider, uh, the machine file, okay? So this is what's called a machine file, okay? So notice, working file means you have the actual file that your digitizer digitized the file in, okay? This is the working file. So if I were to, if I were to uh, compare it, once again, to Illustrator Photoshop, 
Okay. This would be your PSD file or your Illustrator file. And your DST would be your JPEG. Okay. It's already flat. You cannot make changes to it. You could, but you're going to distort or you're going to start. Um, you're going to start making. Um, it, it will not. It will not resize correctly. Okay. Okay. So here, let's say here, let's just adjust the colors because when it turns DST, right, it's going to set colors. Um, what is this? Oh, let me just fix this real quick. Just to match kind of. All right. This one actually doesn't have the mouth. All right. Um, here, the working file, I mean, the machine file, this is what the machine reads. The machine, your embroidery machine cannot read the working file. All right. Actually, let me keep it at its old color so we know this is the DST. Okay. So your machine can read the machine file, right? Obvious. Your machine cannot read the working file. All right, only your software, your your specific software. Each software has a specific uh, extension. Okay, so this is an EMB. Okay, so your machine. Now, if I were to resize this, all right, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab this. Let's go into inches. Uh, I'm going to go 200%. Okay, so notice I'm at 3,600 stitches. I'm going to go uh, to 200%. Okay. So I make it twice as big. Notice my stitches still remain the same, 3,600 stitches. Okay. So it didn't make the appropriate adjustments. Now, when you zoom in, okay, look at all this space that's there. Okay. Look at all the space. So what it did, it didn't actually, it, it made it bigger, but it didn't, the settings did not remain the same, okay? Our settings are now different. Now we have different sizing. So you can create headaches if you resize it, okay? Of course, at a certain percentage, it, it won't make much of a difference, okay? That's why they say it's about 5%. You can make it 5%. You can make it 10% bigger, okay? For the most part, if you're going to make changes, okay? You want to work with a digitizer that has similar or that has the, the same software as you, okay? That's why if your digitizer works in Wilcom, that's why it's good to have, have, have Hatch because you can make changes in Hatch since both are from Wilcom, okay? So that's what I used to do. Uh, my digitizer had uh, Wilcom, I had Hatch, so I was able, okay? I was able to communicate with him and tell him, hey, can I get the working files, but in a Hatch file? And that's easy, so easy. And usually digitizers want to give you the working file because if you have minor changes or minor tweaks, it's easier for them to give you the working file so you can make your changes, okay? So you're kind of helping their digitizer out by doing little minor changes, all right? All right, cool, cool. All right, uh, of course we could go on and on with all the features okay i might get into uh i might make videos just that talk about certain areas of features okay but for the most part all right what i would say okay let's kind of get up here what i would say is even though even though digitizing okay is always seen as like the most difficult thing in the world, which it could when you're first starting. I'm not going to lie. It is very difficult. Okay. The more you see it, the more you review your files. So I'm pretty sure everybody has a bunch of files in their hard drive, right? Maybe files you never opened, right? Maybe you bought files and you bought it as a pack and you have files that you've never seen. Okay. What I would say is review the files, measure distance, kind of see the sequence, kind of ask the question, why did the digitizer do it in this order, okay? Sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it's not obvious, 
but replay, replay files, see how everything kind of came together. And then at the very end, stitch it out so you could visually see it, okay? Because when this, when digitizing all makes sense is when you're over the machine, when you're over the hoop, physically looking at the stitches, okay? Even though I know it's very popular where people say I push start and then I walk away and then I, right? But if you want to learn, you want to learn digitizing, you 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 observe it, you analyze it on the software, and then you take it onto the machine, and then you look at every stitch. You can hear, you can hear when it's doing a sand stitch, when it's doing a fill stitch, when it's doing a walking stitch. Okay, you can hear stuff. You that way, okay, you get to the point where you do walk away from your machine. You know, you know what part of the design you're at just by hearing the the machine. Okay. So, all right, let's take care of some questions here. Um, bam, bam. All right, this one's a good question right here. All right, Rhonda, if my digitizer has hatch and I have another software, can I resize the file in a different software? Yes. Okay. So, what that's going to ha what's going to happen? Okay. Uh, my digitizer has hatch. Most likely, right? You're gonna get your uh, you're going to get your design and you cannot open the the working file okay so you can't open you cannot open this nice file that he used to digitize you're going to you have to edit using the machine file okay which which at a certain point okay at a certain point you cannot resize it okay very tiny small amount of resizing Okay, maybe, yes, but once you double the size, you might run into a problem. Okay, it might you might start seeing uh, open less dense. Okay, so correct answer is you could resize it up to a certain point, but it's not recommended to resize it. Okay, all right, good question, good question there. All right, all right. All right, so for this file, I think it's a very nice one. I already stitched it out, so it's good to go. Okay. Uh, oh, let's do one last thing. Um, if, let's say you want one, you want to duplicate it, right? You could always, you could you could group this. Everybody has group, right, on the thing. You could group it. That way, if you move something, it doesn't change. But what you could do is copy and paste. Copy, paste. Right, and then uh, reflect. Okay, so let's say you want to make a design mirror horizontal. Okay, zero. Put a. Okay, you could do something like that, right? You could do stuff to the design, right? Just FYI, right? So I am gonna put this on, so you could kind of go. So you could stitch it out because I think I think the best way to learn something is to actually visualize and see everything um, face to face. OK, so um, definitely if you went through the the, the, the class today, OK, everything will kind of go full circle when you finally see it stitch out all the way through. OK. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't put my screen. My bad. My bad. Let me let me let me do that again. All right. We gotta push all these buttons right here. All right, let's do that again. Thank you for letting me know. All right, what I just did. Okay. Here, let's control Z all this. All right. Is it still good? Okay. That's actually a good uh a good feature to know, right? So we're gonna select everything. Okay, right click, group. Okay, or you can find it anywhere here. Okay. Yeah, somewhere up here, group. Okay. That way, if you move it, right, it all moves together. Okay, and then we'll copy and paste, copy, paste, shift, right. Of course, there's so many different ways to, to duplicate something. That's just kind of like the most... Uh, generic way to do it then we mirror okay you can mirror this and then 
Just set the position zero. Okay. All right. This is kind of like a if you want to kind of switch it up a bit. All right, bam, bam. All right, just kind of. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right. All right, let's take care of uh, some last minute stuff. Okay. All right, thank you, Kinsbury. All right, for another great class. Yup, appreciate that. Uh, bar B, working file, will comp, and B. You need a working file to resize correctly. I wish they read each other. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's one thing, right? Uh, all embroiders would wish that Wilcom and, and Brilliance had the same working file, but that's not the way it is. Thank you, Lejean. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. So today I am working on a video today. All right. I'm very excited with this video that I'm about to shoot today. All right. I've been actually planning it, uh, getting certain materials for this stuff. Okay. So look out for that. Uh, I should drop Monday, Sunday night, Monday morning, something like that. All right. So. Of course, if 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 you're not subscribed, definitely subscribe. All right. So that way you can see uh, this good video that's about to come out. All right. And just like Lejean says, all right, hit the like button. All right. Let YouTube know, right, that we are in the building. All right. GMG. We're looking out. All right. For those on the replay, right, if you have any questions, leave them down below. Okay, so we can always keep the conversation going, all right, just because the live has ended, all right, the best way to ask questions is always through here, that way, people on the replay, they could always see the questions, and we could always keep the conversation going, okay, definitely, there there will definitely be more parts of uh, software, okay, maybe, maybe I get into a, a different software, learn that software, and go over the the fundamentals of any other type of software. All right. So I want to thank everybody for stopping by today. All right. I hope everybody has a good weekend, a good Saturday. All right. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace out, everybody.